Hello, everybody, and welcome to this plenary session titled Rights to a Future. And I'm sure you're all really eager to what I have to say, but I'm going to ask you to sit back and relax, and first we're going to watch a video. from Orange, California, from New Zealand, Brooklyn, New York, from Bahrain, Occupied Yogurt's territory, and I am Youth Unstoppable. I urge folks here at the Global Climate Action Summit to imagine a better world. There's no time to waste. It's time for ambition. It's time to step up. It's time for action. It's time for ambition, and it's time to step up. It's time to act on climate. It's time to act on climate. On climate. Let's imagine a better world and actually put forward policies and actual labor to make it happen. It's time. It's time to step up. It's time to step up. To step up. To step up. We're the next leaders. We're the next leaders. And we're unstoppable. We are unstoppable. We are unstoppable. We're youth unstoppable. We're unstoppable. Unstoppable. We're unstoppable. 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 Youth are unstoppable. Hello everybody, my name is Luca, I'm 19 years old, I'm coming from the Fridays for Future movement here from Bonn. And thank you. <laughs> and what I basically want to say is, please do me a favor and when you go outside of this plenary, look outside and realize what you see. It's about blue water, green trees, it's about the sun, you see everything that's called nature. And I think all of that, what we see when we look outside, is in a very big danger at the moment. It's everything about the climate crisis. When you look outside, you see young people demonstrating week for week, every Friday, for more than six months now. They want to prevent the climate crisis, they want action right now from the politicians, from the concerns, from, concerns, from everybody that can influence daily politics and decisions that have to be made now. In 10 years, I think, maybe it is already too late to change things and that we are running more and more into the climate crisis. And after those 10 years, Maybe it's not possible to change things and to turn around. We can't put off those important decisions that have to be made now, not tomorrow, now, and better yesterday. The movement, the climate movement, not only Fridays for Future, but as well Fridays for Future, grows very, very fast. In six months, we, have to build, we had to build an international organization. We had to, um, to collect young people, parents. We had to talk to grandparents, lots of scientists from all over the world. And even the entrepreneurs for future exist. Every day, they happen so many things behind the scenes. We had to build a, a structure, we had to do press management. Every day we have to do such things. We have to organize those demonstrations, we, we make workshops, we do education, we do so many things, much more than I can talk to you right now. But this is not enough what we can do. We have to act right now and the talking is over. We have to, do, we have to make decisions. We have to stay united behind the science, I think, and the 1.5 degree goal. Otherwise, climate crisis that exists already now will increase. And the question is, how can we move quicker right now? And I think, imagine, you were the only person that can change the world and save the world right now. What would you do? I think it's that attitude needed from everybody of us in this room. And I think when we, do, when we take this attitude for ourselves, we see, okay, there are more people that have the same attitude and together we can really change things. So I want to invite you, join the protests, engage yourselves more than before. Nothing is more important than engaging yourself or ourselves against climate crisis.
So I think everybody of us has to say to him or herself, here is the point to start right now, in this day, in this plenary maybe. So everybody of us has to use every contact he or her has, join the protest, and make the youth movement a movement for everybody, because this is needed. Without the pressure of the whole society, it will be too late. I don't know if you noticed that on the last Friday we had the first international central strike in Aachen. From more than 17 states, people came to, the, uh, to Aachen and we were more than 40,000 people on the street for climate. That was so fantastic. I was there and, was, and I was incredible. Uh, I don't know what to say. I'm so sorry. But it was so big. But that's not enough. Because I think, what will, what will happen now after this central strike? I think nothing will happen. And why? Because the politicians only see young people going on the street, fighting for their future, for the future of coming generations, but they don't see how important that is, how important it is to act now. And that's why we need everybody in this room going on the street, engage his or herself, and support the climate action of the youth to make it a movement for the whole society and not only for young people. Thank you. Good afternoon. Dear friend, I feel so honored to be, to be here with this uh, very important gathering. Yesterday, in the voices of the landscape plenary, Rayane from Brazil reminded us that we are all taking care of the planet for the future generations. So this opportunity, I will talk to the future generations, the youth, because as, a, as an activist for almost 30 years, I've done my part, yeah? And I know you, the young, and the new generations will do even more than what I, I did for our planet. It's increasingly difficult to trust the old establishment in politics, governments, and business. They will not be the one to solve the crisis we are facing right now. The systems destroyed our forests and replaced it with monoculture plantations, oil palm, mining operations, and infrastructure for industries and investment for the profit of too few. But this crisis is a momentum. This crisis is a moment to make a change. We can use it to make real change. Now to you, the young and youthful, here this afternoon, this is the challenge. It's time to leave behind failed system of the world and put new ones in place. Are you up to this task, the young? I'm done expecting the old political and business establishment to lead us into the new system to protect and nurture our landscape, save our climate and preserve lives. But I have nothing but hope for your generations. As an indigenous person, the Toba Batak from small village in Sumatra, and a leader in indigenous people's movement in Indonesia, I humbly offer you my opinion on the change we need to see based on my experience. In Indonesia, 
we have a huge population of indigenous peoples, 50 to 70 million. We have 84 million hectares. 40 million hectares for that is uh, the best forest that we have in Indonesia. About 70 million hectares is already degraded. So we need to protect 40 million and restore 17 million. And we started the movement 20 years ago to map that. We only reached 40, 10 million. Who is doing that work? The young, the youth, with the technology in their head, with knowledge, with education that they get. But they are working in guiding by the elders, guiding by the, the wisdom. So for you, the young, the next generations, go to your roots. Go you to community. Ask guidance from your elders. You can make a better planet with all knowledge, technology that you, you have in your hand right now. With this, everything you need to support indigenous people to get their right only with this. Use this. Yeah. We have the strong evidence from Indonesia that the young generations, the youth can do more to our planet. I hope your progress will be founded on, inspired by, defined by value and knowledge, technology, institutions, way of life of indigenous peoples, the indigenous system that have been time and again tested and proven as a climate and environmentally, socially and culturally friendly. So please connect with the road of the tree, where you come from, your ancestors and indigenous system. This connection shall become the foundations and inspiration to save the technological advances you will make it. So that's the message to the youth, the youth, the young generations, and only with your participations, your leadership, we will have a plan the better planet for the near future. Thank you very much. Good afternoon. My name is Mayumi. I'm, I go by she and her. I'm 24 years old, uh, and I'm originally from Japan. And today, I just want to begin with a story. So I remember the first time that I attended a conference on natural resource management and rights. I was approached by a number of people who questioned, what is that small girl doing there? Even though I was wearing professional attire and I even carried a name tag, people couldn't understand why I was sharing that same space as them. For most, they thought, oh, she must be the child of some conference participant. Others thought, oh, perhaps she's a hotel staff and asked me to gather them a cup of coffee. At one point, I was even questioned for my ID and email confirming my participation. As I sat in on a conference session later that day, which was ironically on women's rights in Asia and the Pacific, I thought to myself, why was I being singled out? Why did I feel compelled to justify my right to exist in that space? Was I simply too young to participate? Was I too inexperienced? Am I undereducated? Is it because I'm small? 
Is it because I'm Asian? Or is it because I'm a woman? All of these thoughts ran through my head as I started to dissect the intersections of my identity. And I questioned myself. What did I do wrong to solicit such belittling remarks from the most educated and experienced professionals from the sector? You know, when I reflect upon that incident and many others after, I realize that those comments weren't made in an intentionally patronizing way, or at least I hope. But it does speak to the ways in which we, as young people, and so many other socially excluded groups are frequently left out of the discussion on rights and equality. Our opinions, our knowledge, and most importantly, our lived experience is simply invisible in the mainstream discourse. But why? Because when we think about rights, we have to consider rights for whom? Who is marginalized? In what space? In what context? What is hindering their rights? And what can we do about it? How can we build solidarity with one another for a just world? See, I spent the last four days with the Youth and Landscapes Initiative, and I met so many other passionate young people who are shaping the future of their countries. I was so inspired to meet Renata from Brazil, talk about her platform, Empodera Clima, to raise awareness on the vulnerable impacts that climate change has on women and girls in the global south, and her call for a feminist leadership in climate action. I feel so grateful that I was able to meet Rosario, a local activist from Guam, talk to us about her indigenous struggle for equal rights, for environmental justice, and for decolonization. See, young people in the age of social media, we're communicating with people halfway across the world in ways that we have never done before. And even though we come from different geographies and have different lived experiences, we're connecting the commonalities of structural oppression and the impacts that environmental degradation has on the vulnerable people who live in our communities. During our youth workshop, we had open and honest discussions about marginalization. We talked about climate justice. We talked about gender, gender identity and LGBTQ rights. We talked about destigmatizing the conversation around mental health. We talked about racism and colorism in our own communities. We talked about the colonization and dispossession of indigenous lands. We talked about how our identities and positionalities affect our rights and how they affect other people's rights. Even when it wasn't a part of the workshop agenda, we talked about this. Because no matter how contentious these topics might seem to some of you in the audience, we as young people are talking about it. Because it's important to us. But young leaders like Rosario and Renata, they cannot and they did not do it alone. We need you to join in on the dialogue. The discussion, it might begin with us, but we need to include everybody. You know, it takes a lot of emotional labor and courage for us to come up to this stage and communicate with you our visions for a healthy future. So let's use the GLF as a platform. Let's use the GLF as a safe space where we can engage in healthy and safe dialogue. Let's start having these conversations, and let's translate these conversations 
into concrete action. Let us have these conversations, not only in English, but let us have these conversations in Arabic, in French, in Swahili, in Spanish. Let us capitalize on this momentum and let's shift the narrative and action for change together. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Rebecca Gumi. I am a girls' rights initiative leader from Tanzania, a country found in the eastern part of Africa. I would like to take this opportunity to welcome you to think with me, what does it mean to have a healthier present and future? What does it even mean? This is our world today. 18.8 million people are displaced because of climate-related disasters like tropical cyclone Idai, which has just happened and hit three countries in Africa, Mozambique, Zimbabwe, and Malawi. 2.9 billion people in the developing world still use fuels like wood, coal, and charcoal. Between 2030 and 2050, climate change is expected to cause additional 250 deaths per year because of malnutrition, malaria, diarrhea, and heat stress. And while all of this is happening, in our world today, women and girls are always at the receiving end of climate impact and social environmental determinants of health, like clean air, safe drinking water, sufficient food, and secure shelter. And also, women are two-thirds of the world's poor, and their lives and livelihoods are often dependent on natural resources and agriculture. But as I, as I said in the beginning, what does it mean to have a healthier future? To me, to have a healthier future means is to enhance environmental conservation, which is aware and respectful of community involvement and action, to have improved nutrition, to have more resilient communities, to have greater food security and decreased poverty. That, for me, is a healthier present and future. But to be able to achieve a healthier present and future, what can we do? Or how can we act, envision, and create a future which is healthier? We need collective action, especially in climate action initiatives. We know for sure intersectionality is the way for us to go. Working in silos won't be able to uh, make us reach so far. And in questioning that, we should also be able to ask ourselves, where are other groups in the spaces that we are trying to create to talk about these issues? Where are the smallholder farmers? Where are the economists in our conversations? Where are the politicians? Where are the women from the global south who we know for sure carry the burden of the climate change that happens in the world? Where are the young people? Are we here? Can I hear you? Young people, are we here? Yes? Intersectionality is important and ensuring that climate change is not just a topic that we take as, an, as, as, as a single topic, we have to make sure that it's really linked to other sectors because in that way, we'll be able to achieve uh, a lot. And also, women representation in these spaces is very important. But before you think about it, I would like to say, when I'm talking about representation, I am not 
only saying visibility, because that's not substantive representation. Substantive representation is the one that looks at the voice and visibility of the people that we want to see on the table. And that is the one that is going to improve the changes that we want to see today. We also have to make climate change and action relevant to everyone. What kind of language are we using that is relevant and really make our spaces inclusive? We need to interrogate the language that we are using in our spaces. Is our language technical? Is our language assume that we are all converted? Is our action dominated by a certain group of people and really leave others out? We need to ensure that our actions and our spaces speaks to everyone and everyone feel climate change and urgency that we, have, we need to have is for everyone. We also, to, we also need to assist countries to build capacity to reduce health vulnerability to climate change and promote health while reducing carbon emission. And we also need to integrate environmental conservation strategies within women's health programming. As I said earlier, women and girls are always at the receiving end of climate change. But last, and definitely not the least, although girls and women bear the burden of climate change, but they are the world's best bet in the fight for a clean, healthy, and sustainable planet. I thank you. I don't think I can match up to anything these four speakers just said. But I will also share with you something personal. I became an aunt last week. And now answering the question, how do we move quicker together to secure the rights for a healthy life for present and future generations now roots and resonates even deeper with my, with my being. And I'd like to take this opportunity to call out these speakers on their humility because they are the leaders of change. Many of the key messages, the opportunities, challenges, and commitments and actions that we have been discussing over the past two days are actually re reflected quite clearly in these four speakers. And I say that as well with Abdun, who's not actually a youth, but he definitely does not trust the old institutions and politics, so he does value that youth spirit. So we know that we need a united front applying pressure to make decisions, and I refer to Luca here. We are owning the space, and we are shaping our future. We are calling for an inclusive mindset. We are focusing on women, and we are advocating for gender-sensitive policies. Now, this is clear that the, the youth are moving away from fear towards action and hope with courage and integrity. Now, before we continue this, I would like us to collectively answer this question. And we have a Slido for our audience online. How can we move quicker together to secure the rights for a healthy life for the present and future generations? Now, you are meant to have split yourselves up those over 35 and those under 35. Now we would like you to all rise. I need you all to stand up. Thank you. Yes. And everyone is to shift and mix up. And each table is to have a representative of those under 35 and those over 35. It's time to settle down. I'm here in the audience with you. I know we could have this discussion for a very long time. Can I ask you to settle down, everybody? Okay, so the way we're going to wrap up is I'm going to kindly ask our speakers to stand up. I see Mayumi. 
Luca, Abdon, Rebecca. Great. So I'm going to approach a table. Hi, guys. Can I ask you to share your reflections? I'm over here. We're over here. Do, does anyone want to share? <laughs> Whatever. This, this has been a co-created discussion, right? Reflecting in an intergenerational space. May I give you the microphone? So what are your action points? What are your critical reflections? Uh, we Maybe quickly, stand up? Sorry. It's a quite fast agreement uh, that we really need intergenerational collaboration. Because as Mas Abdon also mentioned previously, that what we have, the older generations, indigenous peoples, elder, uh, elder uh, leaders, they have the wisdom, indigenous people knowledge, their roots to the communities. But we also have young people who are now have the privilege of having a good education, the knowledge on technology, and this is very important to utilize both of this, is by the younger generations to need to reconnect, reconnect with their communities and utilize what they have learned, their, uh, for example, their capacity, and how to use technology in order to solve the pr problems of the local communities that they're, face, that are, they're facing. So this is, I think, one of the key points that we were talking about. Maybe the others want to add something more? Can we have a round of applause for that? Thank you very much. I'm moving over to another table over here. Hi. I'm seeing, may I? How do we move quicker? Funding, ah, no, synergies. OK, would you like to share with us how you create or move synergies? OK, we, we do recognize that uh, there are different players uh, that are affected by the uh, right contestations. And uh, to move forward, we need to bring these different uh, actors together and create the synergies. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. OK, so similarly, yes. So similarly, how we need to include, we have an inclusive mindset with traditional ecological knowledge, we also need to with a variety of stakeholders. Now I see a very big group over here. Would you like to share with us your, yes? Do we have Spanish translation? I think we do. Then yes. Would you like to speak on behalf of the Campesino, right? Bueno, eh. Thank you. We are talking about two things. First of all, change our consuming behavior. Consuming behavior is what hurts the earth. Changing our consuming behavior that is killing the world. And second of all, establish priorities. We have a lot of necessities in the world. There are a lot of priorities in the world, but we have a number one priority in the world. Our Mother Earth, the environment, water. We should establish that, that as a priority. The investment that has been done by the governments, by many countries, maybe there are necessities, but they are no priorities because our number one priority should be the Earth. Otherwise, we will reach the point of no return. Our priority should be the environment, water, the Earth. That's our proposal, establishing priorities. The world, the Earth, is our priority. In all the processes, all the actions, all the measures, number one priority should be water, environment, Mother Earth, and then we will talk about investment in our priorities, investment of any kind, investment in any many aspects, investment in environment, human investment. 
there are a lot of necessities. In my country, for example, Colombia, we have had a very violent period, but there is no point in solving the conflict if we don't have an earth where we can live. So our priority number one should be the earth. Of course, it's in priority, so it's important to solve all the conflicts, but our priority number one should be the environment. Gracias. Hmm? Wrap up. Okay, so now it's time to wrap up. I see that you are all very involved in your discussions, but I would like to end on a positive note. So these representatives, our speakers, Rebecca over there, Mayumi, Abdun, and Luca, thank you for representing the youth. You have shown to us that the youth dare to question. We are willing to go out of our comfort zones. We know that we need to do this to grow. And we are not afraid to look into our own backyards to frame the problems which ultimately dictate the solutions. We are empowering transformative change. And these four are amongst the many optimistic visionaries disrupting our corrupt, exploitive, and unjust systems. They are shedding light on alternative pathways to securing rights. We are not, if I may say so myself, the future leaders, but I really think that we are leading the future. Thank you.